Well, audio looks like it's picking up. Getting started here on the stream. Oh, there we are. Yeah, I've got a couple of people already watching. So, stream is live. I am here. I'm not going to. Well, I'll give people a few minutes to get on before I get into anything serious or any real content. Um, but this is it. This is the live stream. Thanks for joining me if you are. Um, yeah. So I'm looking at, I have a couple screens here. I'm looking at the, the main screen that I'm using is right here with the webcam on it. And, and then I have uh, another screen with my man, like dashboard thing for Twitch to show me how things are going there. Uh, so I can keep an eye on the bit rate to make sure that it's still coming through okay and see if anybody chats with me. Um, if you want to chat with me, you can message me there or you can message me in Slack. Although as I just noticed, I just realized this a few minutes ago, um, if I put the Slack channel on screen, it's gonna put your name on the screen too. So I made a Slack channel that is on purpose for sharing on this on this screen. I'd like to do that more anonymously or pseudonymously, but I haven't set that up yet. So if you want to chat using that channel, just bear in mind it could be on screen. Otherwise you can chat with me in Twitch. Of course you have to send a create an account to do that or if you just want to do some other method i've got email open and uh, canvas messages open and slack messages open so if you want to send me something that you don't want to see on the screen you can use one of those methods probably a slack dm would be the best way to get that to me as uh, quick as possible so okay wow great 10 viewers <laughs> that's great um okay that's probably a good point the, the viewer count is always a little bit behind so i think you may have already been there but it just it shows up now and i have 10 viewers so I guess I can get started. Um, welcome. This is DGST 101, and I'm coming to you from uh, HCC 327, which is the classroom I normally teach this class in. Uh, in fact, I'm not really there. I'm using a green screen, and hopefully everything is coming through okay in terms of audio and the video stream. I'm going to go ahead and minimize that a little bit. That might clear it up. So let, let me know how it looks and sounds if you see anything, or if you can't hear me, or if you, if if uh, you know if I'm glitching or something or, or lagging. Let me know. Um, it ha I've used this setup in the spring semester when we went to remote, and it seemed to work okay for uh, for the most part. So um, hopefully it's working now. Um, if not, let me know. Uh, but yeah, this is me. This is I'm Zach Whalen. I'm the professor for this class, and I've got a, a basic green screen setup basically that lets me appear to be here in HCC 327. But I'm not really there. Um, so I think I think I am allowed to be there now. I think that the back they've gone back. Um, back to opening up little parts of campus a little bit I think but it's actually easier for me to do this from home so uh, this is where I am so today's class is well I mean this this live stream isn't class this is just a, a chance for me to talk with you all in real time and synchronously which means that if you have questions you can ask them now and I can answer them now uh, but also this will be archived later in case you aren't able to watch this real time you know this is something where like in the spring semester when we had to go to remote because of the pandemic um, I did have, I mean, it was, I could have an expectation that students would be available at 10 o'clock and 11 o'clock and 2 o'clock, you know, the, the times that we had in class normally. Um, that's not the case in the summer, not, not the case for an online, a class that's online by design. So uh, I, that's why I asked in the survey if 2 p.m. or I asked for you to tell me which times would work for you as far as possible synchronous activity. And the majority of you said 2 p.m. So that's why I chose this time. But if it turns out not to work as well, we can I can send out an updated survey and we can find some other times. Um, and you know, as much as possible, I would like to have you know, real-time conversations with you all. I think I think the biggest challenge of an online class, from my perspective as a, as the teacher of it, is building that sense of community and connection. And that's something that we can, to some extent, do with synchronous activity, either through a video like this or uh, you know, maybe a web conference kind of thing like Zoom or even just a real-time chat where all of us are online at the same time talking to each other in Slack. So that's uh, that's the purpose of this live stream. And um, also just I think some several of the concepts and things that we're going to be doing in this class, it's easier to have video anyway or it's easier for me to explain them step by step using video. 
So rather than pre-record a whole bunch of videos, which is what I've done the past couple times I taught this class, uh, I thought it might be better just to live stream and then archive those live streams. So you can watch the stream live if you if possible or watch it later and have the same, uh, same content that way and see that step by step. But this live streaming setup is pretty easy for me to work with. So um, yeah, it works. It's easier, easier than like shooting and editing and uploading. It kind of automates a lot of that process. So anyway, hope it works for you. Let's see. Um, yeah, oh wow, 14 viewers. Great, welcome. Um, every now and then we do get spam, by the way. Uh, when, I, when I've done this before, that is just in the Twitch chat. So if some of you 14 people are spammers, then you know that's okay, but everyone else just ignore them. <laughs> All right, so this class, this is the first day of class. And so uh, introductions are in order. I am Dr. Zach Whalen. I'm an associate professor at the University of Mary Washington. I teach something called digital studies, which is what this class is an introduction to. Uh, but I'm also an English, I mean, I primarily am an English professor. Uh, I got my PhD in English, but my PhD was uh, somewhat specialized into uh, video game studies, which is one of several things that fall under the bigger umbrella of digital studies now. And so uh, I got my PhD at the University of Florida, and I came straight here to start teaching in 2008. So, um, yeah, 11, 12 years, I don't know, it's been a well, I guess I'll be starting my 12th year in the fall. That's how we'll do it. Something like that. Okay. It's hard to remember. Um, but yeah, I've been here for a while and I helped create our digital studies minor and then eventually the common digital studies major. Uh, I imagine some of you are taking this class because you're, you are one or either of those um, or both. I know of at least one person who has done both the common digital studies major and the digital studies minor. Uh, she might be the only one. Anyway, um, <laughs> whatever reason you're here, I'm glad you're here. This is a, a fun class, an exciting class, my favorite class. And it's even more fun and exciting and intense over the summer. And so that's what that's what you're here for. So today I wanted to try to answer some questions that you all raised in your in that information survey that I sent out and basically give you an introduction to the class uh, structurally, like how this is going to proceed uh, and to some extent conceptually, like uh, answer some questions about like what is this class actually about. Um, in fact, I wanted to start with that because in the survey I asked, uh, like, what are you looking forward to in this class? And um, what are you most anxious about or concerned about in this class? And I'm not going to uh, answer anyone or identify anyone's answers specifically. I have it displayed to me in a certain in a way that I, I can't actually see who who wrote which response. Um, so I'm not going to out anyone. But uh, there there were definitely a couple themes that emerged as I looked through those responses. And one of those would be uh, a lot of questions about what is digital studies. So either um, like I wanted, I'm taking this class to find out what digital studies is, or I'm taking this class because I have to and I don't really know what digital studies is, or, or some things along those lines. Um, that was a question that emerged and a concern, there was a related concern, but also some several people expressed some concern about um, not being quite as tech savvy, and so they were concerned about whether this class might go over their head in some ways or, or help them, or they might struggle with that. So uh, I would like to try to answer both of those questions first and then get into the structure of the class. Okay, so I actually, so the question of, oops, sorry, well, I need to switch my, my scene here. I'm using um, OBS, uh, Open Broadcasting Software, which is something that a lot of like streamers use, but it works for me too. So um, this is actually not the browser tab that I meant to have displayed here, so let me switch that over. Uh, but it lets me uh, basically be in front of things and I can I can point to them. I, at some point, maybe I'll, I'll walk you through my whole setup because it's it was very cheap actually to set up a green screen, um, less than $10. Uh, so that's kind of a nice thing. That, like the, 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 the behind me is um, just neon green poster board that I got at Walmart for I think 80 cents each, something like that. And I just, um, you can't see obviously because that's the point, but I glued them all over the wall behind me. Uh, this is a, a brick wall that we didn't have any other purpose for. So I just, I set up my computer here. I glued them to the wall because it's kind of humid in this room. So I thought tape wouldn't work. So I just hot glued them there and then, you know, it just works uh, with OBS. So <laughs> anyway, uh, I wanted to uh, actually not start with this tab either, but let me get over here and see this one. So this is this is, I actually put together a little PowerPoint or slideshow with Google. I don't usually do slideshows. I don't like them, honestly, but I think just to kind of answer some basic questions, it's fine. It's, a, it's an okay way to do that. Um, so I'm going to, yeah, to start with this, like what is digital studies? So I do, I tend to think of digital studies in three ways, or I think of it as encompassing three areas. It's an interdisciplinary field of academic study that encompasses 
uh, at least these three areas. So uh, we could talk about digital creativity, which is something we can practice. So each of these has a verb associated with it. So we're practicing digital creativity, uh, we're understanding digital culture, and we're developing digital methodologies. And the semester is organized around exploring different topics within each of these areas. And as an introduction to the minor or, or as a component of the major, you can think about each of these areas being developed further in some of those programs. So, for example, we have a class on digital storytelling taught by the computer science department. And some of the things we might do and call digital creativity here in this class, you might be doing in digital storytelling later on or maybe now or maybe you've already done it. Um, so that's one example. For digital methodologies, we don't really have a class that I can think of that segues straight into that, but that's something that, uh, well, actually, no, I taught a senior seminar last semester on uh, computational text analysis, and so that's something that, uh, that would be considered a digital methodology. Um, so when we think about digital creativity, it can be all kinds of things, but essentially, I'm interested in things that we're doing with computers for the purpose of being creative, and these are things that we can't do without computers. So this isn't just, I wrote a book and like I typed a book and then I uploaded a PDF to my website, but I program an interactive fiction that users get to work with by um, typing commands or by clicking on links to make decisions. Like that's something that you can only have with a computer. So that's the kind of thing we're talking about. I just, off the top of my head, came up with a list of things that we can do and think of as digital creativity. So animated GIFs, digital audio, Twitter bots, interactive fiction, Photoshop, glitch art, augmented reality, video editing, video game design, 3D printing, um, and repurposing electronic devices. This is not an exhaustive list. This was like literally 10 minutes ago. I was just like, what are you, you know, everything off the top of my head. And that's what I came up with. Uh, digital culture. Um, so many things about our culture are digitally inflected and shaped by digital technologies and people who control those. And so there's a, a ton of things really that can be covered under this and are, are vitally important <laughs> topics. Uh, memes, emoji, fake news, aggregator sites, the dark web, social media. I'm not going to just read all these. You can read these if you'd like. I'll share this later if you want. It's really just a few. It's not really a PowerPoint, but um, you can kind of read the list here. Toxic fandom, uh, the Internet of Things, cybersecurity. These are all sets of things that shape how we organize ourselves as a civilization and how we relate to each other. And that's what we're talking about when we talk about culture, and it's all digital now. Or almost everything is inflected by digital technology. And I'm interested in understanding that inflection, like what, what makes that different or unique because it's digital. Okay, so this day of class, by the way, is probably going to be fairly one-sided in the sense that I have a lot of things to show you and explain to you, but please, um, you know, this can be interactive, so if you have questions or comments as I'm talking, feel free to uh, add those either in the, the Twitch chat, which is over here to my left, or um, in the Slack chat, which is over here to my right. Uh, I'll see those and hopefully respond. Oh, nice, I have things my smartphone too as things come in that way. Anyway, so digital culture and then digital methodologies. This is where we're, uh, this one's a bit harder to understand until you actually do it and we will do this later on, but this is where we're trying to answer a question or solve a problem using a digital tool, a digital tool. And so this might mean creating a timeline, creating a map, a network graph, um, or some kind of st statistical analysis or data rich storytelling. And um, yeah, again, it's harder to explain in a list like this, but we'll see when we get there. Um, okay, so that's pretty much the, the big three, but all of that comes together around this idea of digital identity, which is something that you're going to start working on uh, today. This is the, the beginning of this semester, but it's also the beginning of thinking about digital identity as the focal point for this, for this class. By the way, if I'm going too fast, you know, this will be archived later and you can play it back at whatever speed you prefer uh, later on. I'm going to try to keep this to 30 minutes, but I sometimes I can ramble. so. You know, if you feel like you need to play this back at double speed, of course, you're welcome to. Okay, so that was the uh, one question, what is digital studies? You may still have questions. Uh, please ask if you do, or just, you know, trust me that you will, you will know or you'll have a better understanding five weeks from now. Like, that's something that I can certainly hope for. Uh, okay, the other thing that I can just mention, I don't have a PowerPoint point for this, but the other thing that several of you mentioned or alluded to was some anxiety or concern about uh, the technological part of this class or getting lost or getting behind. Um, this is not a programming class. This is not a computer science class. Um, it's not even really a web development class, even though you will be doing a fair amount of that. Um, this is a class that's meant to, to take whatever you start with in terms of your digital skill set and then expand on that. So wherever that is, I mean, that's going to be different. Some of you may already have uh, built a domain. Maybe you've already been blogging for a while, or maybe you've never, maybe you've never done this. Maybe you've um, 
you've never uh, had a, a, a Twitter account, or maybe you've never used these technologies, um, that's okay, and you'll be fine. Uh, the parts of this, the, several parts of this class will be self-directed in terms of the difficulty level or the challenge that you take on for yourself, and that's by design, that's on purpose. Um, other parts of this class I will do a lot, I, ho I hope, I'll do my best to uh, give you the resources that you need in order to be successful with it and offer uh, additional help or tutoring or explanation if I need to or if I can. Um, so I, I hopefully, yeah, I, I, think, uh, I think you'll be successful. Um, uh, one thing to keep in mind, and I, I would like to, so something that I, 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 I still have to try to train myself out of is whenever I talk about a task, like something that's, that we need to do with our, your website or with setting up Slack or something like that, um, I, I do have a tendency for, some, for things that are familiar to me or things that I've done a lot of times, sometimes I'll say, oh, it's easy, you just blah, 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 you just blah, 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 <laughs> or you just sign in or you just, you just create a new subdomain or whatever it is. Um, I, I tend to re resort to that ca casual sort of language of ease sometimes, and it's something that um, I've recognized can be, um, can undermine students' learning in some ways, and I'm, I'm trying not to do that, and I would encourage you to, to think about your own language in this way as well. Uh, what happens is if I say, oh, it's easy, you blub, 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 and then what happens if you try to blub, 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 but it's not easy and you can't do it? Sometimes I'm, I recognize that students will internalize that failure and think, well, if I can't do it, 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 it's easy and I can't do it, so there must be something wrong with me. So um, that's something that is not the case. Um, this this not something wrong with you. Uh, there's nothing wrong with being stuck or being frustrated. Um, this is a class where uh, it's a uh, error favorable climate, meaning it's okay to make mistakes and struggle and get frustrated. Uh, it's something that is just a normal part of using a computer and creating a website and working with digital technology, no matter how long you've been doing it. So it's something that's a regular part of my interaction with computers. I was very frustrated with Canvas, for example, a few hours ago. Uh, you know, it's something that just, it's a continual process. What you have to recognize is that it's something you can work through, that this is a problem you can solve, and I'm here to help you solve those problems. Uh, it's not something that's wrong with you or something that's different about you. It's really just, you know, where you, wherever you are, right? Uh, wherever you are, you can work through it. Uh, okay, so, but always feel free to reach out. Um, there, uh, if you go to my webpage, let me show you how to do this. If you ever need help with something or have a question or want to you know, talk about an assignment or uh, literally anything, uh, zachwayland.net slash contact is the place to go. And this has my general availability. I need to just update that to say summer 2020, but it's the same. It's pretty much, um, although, I mean, I guess I'm not going to be physically present at my office for a while, but you know what I mean. Uh, the, there are a number of ways you can email me, obviously. I'm on Twitter and Facebook. Uh, I even have a couple of phone numbers here. This one's for voice and this one's for text. This is actually a Google Voice number right here, so it, it's not my actual carrier cell phone number. So um, just FYI, I don't, I don't recommend putting your personal phone number on your website, so I wanted to explain that that's not what I've done here. I also have a YouTube channel and Twitch, which is how you're watching this now, probably. Um, one of those two. And then whenever we are in back in face to face, this is where my office is, Combs 308, but I won't be there. You can send me a message through here, but that's not always the best way to get in touch with me quickly. Um, usually Slack is going to work better for this class. So uh, if you are not yet in Slack, I can show you a couple of things with that, but that's something that you should do soon. Okay, and then if you'd like to schedule an appointment, you can go click on this, book now, and this will pop up with uh, different options for how you want to meet. Um, this was a, a special one-hour consultation for my spring class. I should take that off. But otherwise, if you want to just text, like have a text-based chat, it could be something in Slack or even over text message. Um, you can select one of those or a video conference or some other kind of conference. Just select the modality or the platform you'd prefer and uh, then pick a time. And this has my time and availability. This is automatic, automatically set up that... So it's automatically set up with my availability. Um, okay, my kids, I have, I didn't mention this before, but I have four kids and you may see or hear from them. Um, okay, my son Daniel has injured himself, it sounds like. Um, he does that a lot. Not that he's like injury prone, but he takes a lot of risks and sometimes gets hurt because... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you may hear from them or see them. That was, I don't know if you, you probably hear him. That's Daniel. Uh, this kid. He, so he's seven. So he, 
you know, very energetic guy. Uh, uh, lots of bumps and bruises. Um, I don't know, that sounded pretty intense. <laughs> I don't know. I found out later, but yeah, this is this is the kid who, you know, someone else left out a razor, like a hobby, hobby knife razor blade. So Dan Daniel, when he was like five, he was like, "What does this do?" And it just stuck it in his arm. Uh, so, oh, he knows better than to do that now. But he is over in the craft supply area. So, anyway, I got a thumbs up from my wife. So I think. I think he's fine. I'll, I'll, I'll find out what happened and I'll, I'll update you all later. <clears throat> anyway, book an appointment and it goes into my Google Calendar. It's automatically synchronized with all my other things that I need to do. So um, it, 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 I definitely will be available if you can book a time with that. It, it definitely will be there. Um, there. I may need to follow up to figure out exactly how you want to contact me or talk. So, uh, okay, so let's get into, <coughs> excuse me, let's get into um, let's talk about the class structure a little bit. This is a very condensed class. It's five weeks, but really if you look at it, it's more like four and a half weeks. And this is, uh, this is a class that normally is a 15 week class. So we've tried to cram a lot in here um, and I'll, it have reduced a fair amount of what would normally happen in a 15 week semester just because it's not physically, logistically possible to do it in four or five weeks. So this is, um, this is the Canvas class. This is the Canvas class. Uh, Thing on the Canvas course, uh, and you can see it here, um, and me in front of it. I've been trying to put like images. Am I pointing the right way? I'm trying to check my. Yeah, there you go. So yeah, this, I've been trying to put images on here on some of these pages just to liven them up a little bit. Uh, I feel like Canvas can be very dry and um, kind of hard to make the content look exciting, especially if you have a lot of content uh, to get across. So let's look at some of this stuff here. This is um, me, obviously. Uh, this is the homepage, and on this website, let's take a look at some of the things that are here. Um, we ha I do have a syllabus. I don't want to spend a ton of time on the syllabus, um, but of course, you know, you should read it and get to know it. I guess a couple things that are worth emphasizing. So the um, this is these are the learning outcomes. So these are the things that I'm hoping for for you in four four and a half weeks. Um, develop, that you'll be able to develop skills in designing, building, and sharing ideas that can be expressed through you. This is a very wordy <laughs> learning outcome. But basically, you'll be able to do those things I was talking about in the slideshow. Um, you're going to learn about using technology to research, and analyze, and execute critical inquiry. This is the digital methodology part. Um, you learn about digital culture. You can see these are the three things, but kind of explained in more, um, I guess, learning outcome ease. Uh, but this is what we're talking about in a bit more detail. The structure of the class here, this is also probably worth underscoring a little bit. I am going to use Canvas announcements a lot, so make sure that you are getting those. Um, there's a setting, I have it in student mode right now, so I don't know if I can actually pull, yeah, I don't want to switch over to it now, but um, make sure you get those announcements either immediately, th immediately through email or you can also have it um, send you a text message, which I don't know, that I would not prefer that myself, but if, if that's how you like to get things, then that would work fine. Uh, the other thing you can do is, um, I think you can actually have a DM you on Twitter, which I have no idea why you would want to do that, but Canvas lets you do that, I think. But anyway, make sure that you're getting announcements. Um, the, uh, uh, because I'll, I will direct you to the uh, information for each day, and also, uh, like if, it, if I'm going to live stream, I'll, I'll make sure to tell you when I'm going to do that, uh, other things like that. Uh, so that's still available here in the pages section of the class, and I'll show you that in a second. But um, also, we are going to be using Slack a lot, so make sure you're in Slack. I think many of you are. Um, let's see. How many people are we up to now? Yeah, we're up to quite a few people. Um, but the, um, yeah, yeah, I can't tell if everyone's in here, but if you are not yet in Slack and you're watching this now or later, uh, make sure you reach out to me and get in Slack as soon as possible. Uh, so if you if you you can get to it in a number of different ways on the site, but if you click on this link here, you can see it. It's DGST. Well, um, it's D, the the Slack workspace is called DGST 101 Summer 2020 Slack com. That's the the workspace URL that you have to log into. Um, I'm already logged in, so it just took me straight to the the app. Um, but uh, you should figure that out. I I guess I'll, I'll do a more intent or more detailed walkthrough of how to use Slack probably. Maybe I'll do that tomorrow, but um, it, it is something that we are going to be using a lot as a way to talk to each other and build our community. Uh, this is what we have instead of a face-to-face -face classroom where we can, where we would normally do that. So, um, yeah, this is 
this is Slack. All right, so I'm on Twitch right now, uh, as you can see, and I will archive these things on YouTube. Once those are posted on YouTube, it will also post as an announcement in Canvas, so you'll be able to see that that video is ready to be viewed as uh, on the YouTube channel. Okay, so structure of the class, uh, lots of assignments here, and there's basically two or three of these per week. Uh, for the first week, you're gonna be working, working on uh, digital creativity. I forgot to add that one. Uh, each week has a reflection and participation report, and we also, yeah, that's about it um, for this week. Um, these are broken down and easier to see on the course outline, which you can get to. This is not the easiest way to get to it. If you get to the home, if you go to the home page, um, I really wish Canvas would let me add a link here on the left, but it does not. I would like to make a link to this page here. This is the course schedule, uh, tentative, of course, but I think pretty good as far as what we're going to be doing. And this is week one. So here we are in week one. I've kind of already answered this, what is digital studies question, um, maybe, hopefully. Uh, hopefully you've gotten started in Slack. And we, I do want to spend the rest of the time here talking about domains and digital identity, but uh, that's, that's how these days will, will go. Um, and then at the end of this week, then you should have completed these two activities, Hello World and Digital Creativity, and then your week one reflection and report in which you'll talk about all the things you did this week. So uh, a lot of this site, by the way, the course in Canvas is in progress. I, I used a different way of communicating course content last summer. And so what I'm doing is adapting that into the Canvas way of doing things. And it's not a straightforward copy and paste. There's a lot of reorganization I have to do. So bear with me as I work on that. Um, but that's this is one key piece of information, the course outline, which again, I would love to put into the left navigation bar, but I can't. Um, so <laughs> yeah. Uh, at least the, I, there's sort of a workaround I might be able to do, um, but I, I I don't think it'll work on the mobile version. That's, that's what I'm, I'm concerned about. Anyway, um, that's the course uh, outline. And then what I'm going to do for each day of class, and I'll post this before I stream or, or sometime in the morning, is create a page like this one. Uh, this is today's, and this is a page that is set up with uh, a more detailed outline that's based on stuff today. So again, same things like what is digital studies, um, but then actually getting into answering some of these questions right here. So I will add my live stream video to this page, but if you want to look at this first or just look at this later, um, you can also get the same essential information from it this way. So um, I'm not going to get into this just yet, but this is, you can, you're welcome to and, and, and start exploring these uh, things here. Uh, so the week one, day one, and then uh, like tomorrow, of course, it'll be day two. I'll, I'll post these in the morning sometime with an announcement saying that this page has some content in it and, and open it up here. It's set up on, I've also set it up as like, uh, it, it shows up at, on your to-do list. So like this page says that you have something to do, uh, but there's nothing to turn in. It's not an assignment. It's just information that is specific to today. So hopefully that makes sense. And you'll see it in your to-do list in Canvas. Okay, so um, yeah, again, if you have questions, feel free to, to put them into either Twitch or Slack chat. Otherwise, I'm going to keep moving. Um, so uh, yeah. Okay, so I think we talked about a couple, yeah, maybe a couple more things on the syllabus to look at. Um, yeah, not really. Okay, so, sorry. Uh, uh, one thing I did want to show you, if you look on the assignments screen of Slack, so the, this is another thing, not Slack, of Canvas. The, the thing about Canvas is that you can organize assignments differently, and I've organized these by week. So if you click on show by type, I don't know why it calls it type, but you've got week one, week two, week three, each of these is broken out by week. And I, I've, I've really thought of this class in week units, so week by week. Um, these are the three things you need to make sure you've done by Friday. Each of these things has multiple things tied into it, but these are the three sort of checkpoints basically for this week. So that's uh, something to, to keep in mind as a way to find this content as well. So when you look at each of these, they, they do have uh, an explanation of what's going on with each of these, but I will spend time in class. Uh, this will be talked about on day three, uh, for example. So uh, you don't have to start this yet, but of course, if you'd like to look at it, you're, you're welcome to. All right, so I'm, I'm basically, there's so much content for this class, I'm trying to kind of give it to you little by little, 
so that you can see how it builds off of how one idea builds off of the other. Uh, I don't want to give it to you all at once in, because it's kind of overwhelming, I think, or I, I feel like it can be. So uh, that's that's one reason why I'm doing it little by little. But another thing is like it just helps you conceptualize it better, I think. Okay, so let's see. I do. I think I will. I think I will take a look at. Sl no, I don't want to do Slack. Should I do Slack or not? I'll take a look at Slack. Why not? Uh, so this is the. I'm going to pull it up in the browser here, and this will be, by the way, showing you. Uh, I mean, this will be streamed, so I'll try to keep it. Control what's in view here. Um, but this is Slack, and Slack is a workspace or chat kind of space. It's meant for real time communication. Um, it's something that is useful and, and widely used in a lot of industries, and a lot of companies use Slack. So I think uh, developing some skill and in, in using Slack is a good thing to have. Uh, so uh, it, uh, that's one reason why I think uh, Slack is a good thing to add to our class. As I said earlier, the, Slack is really the way that we can talk to each other. So it's something that um, we can use instead of what we would normally build as a community face-to-face. -face. And I, in my experience using Slack, I have found it much more important for a summer class that's taught online as opposed to uh, an in-person face-to-face class in the normal semester just because it's really the only way that we're going to be able to get to know each other outside of you watching my videos and reading my assignment descriptions and me seeing your assignments as you turn them in. So there will be several times where we have conversations here that are directed uh, where I say here's something I'd like for you to share in Slack or, or respond to in Slack. Um, sometimes though it might just be an informal place to ask a question or, or collaborate with someone. So uh, if you've never used Slack before, it is, I think, pretty intuitive, at least to get started. But there are a couple of things that you might not uh, recognize at first. Let me switch to the live stream chat thing. So um, you type messages, as, as you see here. Uh, this is me demonstrating how to type in Slack. And you do have formatting options you can do. It, it accepts markdown syntax. Um, and I'm not actually super fond of how it does that, but it, it's okay. Um, and you can also, you've got, I guess these are shortcuts. This is a new thing. I don't even know what that's for. Um, but you can uh, share files here. So if you're working on something and you have a, a, a version of something you want someone else to see, you can share a version of that. You can also do uh, snippets of code. So if you get to the point where when we're working on code kind of things, if you want to share some of your code and try to figure out why it's not working, Slack is a good way to do that because it'll format your code correctly. If you sent me that in an email, uh, the email outlook might do something weird with it and it might not look right and then I wouldn't be able to see what was wrong because all the things wrong with it might be Outlook's fault, not your fault or not, not something else. So um, you know, we try to use Slack, especially for tech support kind of things. Um, within Slack, you can do a number of things. If you do the forward slash, you have what are called commands, uh, slash commands, and one that might be um, fun to try if you are online right now is the Giphy uh, integration. So if you do forward slash Giphy, and that's G-I-P-H-Y, then you can say, um, you can type some message here. Whenever you type it in, it will, um, yeah, there you go. It goes, uh, Giphy will respond with a uh, a GIF, a random one. If you don't like that one, I do like this one actually, but uh, if you don't like it, you can shuffle it before you decide to send it. So let's see. Mm. I, I did post one earlier with Obi-Wan. Okay, we'll do Ralph, sure. So once you, you know, once you find one you like, hit send. If you don't find one you like, don't hit send. Uh, there's a few others that can be fun, but that's uh, the basic way you do that. Uh, if you want to reply to someone, so uh, if you wanted to reply to me, you can type I, at Zach, and you know uh, I will show up. There's another Zach in here too, so I, make sure you select the right one that you want to message, and then um, you can click on that as it pops up, or hit tab, and then this is a reply. Um, you can also, so as you see, uh, other actions besides messages actually produce updates here. So Ryan just joined the live stream chat channel. So hello, Ryan. And so I can actually respi reply to him here. Um, you can also do what's called a threaded reply. So if you wanted to have a, a discussion that's a bit off of the main topic or that you want to keep a bit sort of out of view, um, you can click on this button here to start a thread. And then 
this is a threaded reply. And these can be useful if we get into longer discussions um, or if you're joining a discussion kind of after the fact. Um, so you can see that there is, like everyone else can see that, yeah, there is a reply here, but you don't necessarily see that until you click on it. So you can choose to ignore it if you, if you don't feel like it. Okay, so over on the left, these are channels. And so far, there's just a couple. Um, I, Slack, this is a new thing Slack is doing. It's making you create a channel called project and a channel called team. I couldn't figure out how to make it not do that. So it just wants, really wants to do that now. Um, but uh, we'll make more channels for modules to work on those and for different projects. Um, you can find all of the available channels by clicking on the word or clicking on the plus sign and um, browsing channels to see what's here. There's only four so far, but we'll probably have a couple dozen by the end of the semester. And these are basically chat rooms or, or places you can see when you type a message there, only people in that channel will be able to see those messages. Um, if you, unless you make it a private channel, anyone could join that channel later and see those messages. Um, you can make a private channel if you'd like. Uh, this is possible if you, you just hit plus add a channel and then um, create a channel, I guess. If you do make a private channel, you don't have to include me. Uh, I am the owner of this workspace, but if you make an ad, if you make a, a private channel, uh, I cannot see it. So uh, that's perfectly fine with me. If you'd like to do that, just bear in mind that, that you, you can't do that. I think also, I can't remember, if you make a private channel, if you can add people after the fact, you might not be able to. Um, so use that, I guess, judiciously, but um, you're certainly welcome to. If you make a private channel, I don't think I even know that it exists. So. Uh, that's certainly your prerogative. Okay, so let's see. I've been going for a bit here, so I don't want to take it too much longer. Uh, I think for the next thing, uh, so I, th I mean, there's, there's more to see with Slack, but I think a lot of it, you just sort of get used to it or you kind of figure it out by trying. So um, I will leave my introduction to Slack for now, and then hopefully you all can uh, figure it out to some extent by playing around with it. Um, sorry, I'm on different tabs here. Um, but if you do have questions about it, let me know. If you can't get into Slack, of course, let me know. Uh, it is something where I can't actually reset your accounts, um, but I can show you how to do it yourself, basically. Um, like, I'm, I'm the owner of the workspace, but I don't have access to your account details. I just can tell you to go, go sign in there. Okay, so let's take a look at today's activities. Um, I was about to call it homework, but I guess every, it's all homework for this class. Um, so let's see if I can find that page again. So it's not here. I have to go here. I'm going to make these links easier to find, by the way, because as you can see, I'm even having a hard time finding these. And I, I organized it myself. So here's today's stuff, um, the live stream, which again, I'll put here. Uh, there's a bit more about Slack here and how to sign up for it and the link to it right there. Um, I've got, the, I need to correct that. It's not actually at mail. It's at umw.edu. Uh, but you'll see that when you go to this join page, you'll see that that's the only option it gives you. Um, but I should update that just to be clear. Uh, okay, so if you have not already done it, uh, one of the things that you need to start off with this class is a domain. And I want to talk a little bit about what a domain is and how to make a good choice about a domain. Uh, this is important. So you only get one when you sign up through UMW domains, and that's why it's important. If you don't know what a domain is, there's a short explainer video you're welcome to look at. But what we're talking about are these things here, umw.edu, youtube.com, zachwayland.net. Uh, what we're talking about when we, when we talk about a domain in this class is potentially uh, yourname.com or .net or .org or yournickname.com or, or whatever you want. Uh, this is a significant investment in your ability to own this. This is something that most other schools do not do, but that UMW has kind of led the way in doing. Um, and so we have a lot of experience helping students get started with their digital identity around this idea of uh, owning a domain. This is something that we are going to pay for for you, um, but it's something that we will only continue to pay for while you're a student. Once you graduate or transfer, then we will, um, the technical term is we will transfer the domain to you if you want, or we will release it. And we can talk about the different options there. But uh, if you would like to get started with a domain, or if you have not yet, or if you're ready to, this is where, we, this is where it happens. Um, you need to think about a domain name, and there are certain things that I recommend and certain things that I, I recommend avoiding. Um, so uh, the website where we do all this is umw.domains or umw.domains.com. I'm not going to go to it now, but well, I guess I can go to it now. Um, it looks like this. Um, that's the wrong link. Um, but yeah. 
so many windows. It is umw.domains. And this is what it looks like. Um, and you have to sign up or log in. You have to log in with your umw email address, uh, the same net ID that we'd use to access banner or canvas or, or email. And if you have never logged into UMW domains before, the first thing he's gonna ask you to do is sign up for a domain. So if you're not ready to sign up for a domain yet, don't do that yet. Um, you can look around the site, look at the help guides. It talks a lot here about what domains are and kind of the, the process of signing up. I think it makes sense to do a little research first and to step back and think about this decision before you commit to something because you only get one of these. Um, it's not something that can be taken back and it's a, it's a legal contract. It's a legally binding contract between you and us and there's an organization called ICANN, I-C-A-N-N, -N, which uh, maintains domain, the domain registry system and there's just one entry for you in it uh, that, we, that we will provide for you. Um, if you do end up making a choice that you regret, you can, you can go get your own domain, but you would have to pay for that yourself. Um, anyway, <laughs> I don't want to scare you, but I do want you to think carefully about this. Okay, some things that I recommend. Um, keep it simple. So avoid hyphens if possible. Um, avoid UMW or other things. Keep it one thing. So keep it something that is you. Um, it doesn't literally have to be your first name and last name. Uh, some people have like a screen name that they like to go by or a nickname that they've kind of embraced as their identity. If you can do some version of that, that's great. Um, I recommend avoiding reference to UMW because at some point you will not be a UMW student and you want this domain to work for you, not for us. So make it about you and not about the fact that you're a UMW student, right? So make it something that will be uh, potentially useful for you 10 years from now, right? Something that of course you will have learned from your experience at UMW, but you will no longer be identified as a UMW student, you will just be you. So think of it that way. Um, keep it as short as possible. Domain names have to be unique. So there is only one zachwayland.net. Um, and so if someone has already registered your name.net or .com, you can't take that from them. Uh, that's how it works. It can only be one entry. So uh, you may have to be creative. Um, um, Samantha had a question. I will get to that in a second. Um, the, uh, you you want to keep it as short as possible. Another thing to try is try to say it out loud and make sure that it's easy to hear and understand what to type to get to it later. Think about like if you if you ever hear like somebody on a radio commercial say then or on a podcast, they say the name of a, of a domain, sometimes it's hard to understand what to actually type. Um, so if you, yeah, because different words can sound the same, uh, different names can sound the same if they're spelled differently. So think of it as simple as possible, basically. Also, just a, another thing to look out for is if your first, if like the end of your first name, if you're using your name and the end of your first name and the beginning of your last name, Make sure there's no kind of awkward middle word that is created accidentally by that. Sometimes, uh, sometimes that happens, and that's regrettable too. So, uh, if that if your name is in that situation, you probably already know to watch out for that. But just just an FYI. Okay, so let me see. Go to the question. So, will we keep this? Um, okay, so I think Samantha is asking about after you graduate or leave. Um, your your domain is so we technically own it on your behalf while you're a student here, but you own it really. And so um, ownership though in a domain is a, uh, a, a, it's more like a subscription. It's more like a, a, an ongoing thing. So when I pay for my domain, I have to pay for a year's worth of ownership of that domain or two years worth or, or whatever it is. Um, I don't remember how I have it set up currently. Um, so we pay for it on a yearly basis for you while you're here. And then after you graduate, then it's your opportunity, then your choice to own it. So Samantha, after you graduate, yes, you would have to pay for it if you want to keep it. So you do not have to pay for it now. It is free for you now. So if any, if at any point in your research, as you're thinking about the domain, if you see something that asks you to pay money, you're in the wrong place. You should not be paying money for this. Um, so yeah, we were, we are paying for it now. When you graduate though, we will transfer ownership to you, which means you would have to keep paying for it to keep it going. So um, that is a cost that is, it, it's a open, it's a retail market. So at that point, um, you should do some research to find out what a good deal is. Uh, the company I use right now, they have a, the, it's called Reclaim Hosting and they have a good deal. Um, they offer uh, a domain and hosting, which are two separate things usually, uh, but they offer that together as a package for $30 a year, which I think is pretty competitive. Um, it's extremely competitive actually. I have not seen a better deal, but. Um, I recommend them. I like them as a company, but 
Uh, you should definitely do your research if you want to do that, but you don't have to do that anytime soon. And in fact, you know, the deals that are available will probably be different by the time, you know, you're graduating or they might be. Okay, so, um, sure, I can do that. So Jessica had a question, so because she is using her domain for another class as well. I was planning to talk about a little bit about this a little bit tomorrow um, in terms of setting it up. I can show you the basics of it, and I don't want to get too far into it because I've already gone on longer today than I meant to. Uh, but let me show you what where to go for this, Jessica, and then you can... Um, well, there, there is a help guide about setting up a subdomain too, but like, I can show you what to look for in, in uh, UMW domains. So this is my domains dashboard, and yours will look like this once you've registered your domain. And what I'm looking at here is technically something called cPanel or control panel, um, but commonly we refer to this as your UMW domains dashboard. And this is where you install software and set up things like subdomains. I'll talk more about subdomains tomorrow, but um, if you want to just go ahead and do that now or try it out, this is where you can get to it. It's an area called subdomains. These are different, see these different like rectangle things. Um, the, uh, I will get back to that question, Samantha, I just saw that. Um, go to subdomains and uh, click on subdomains and create it. So this is um, uh, my current account that I'm logged into. The root domain is elsweb.org. So this will be, you know, substitute that for whatever your domain is actually going to be. So uh, you can create a subdomain by DGST 101, uh, by just naming it here, whatever you want, um, or you know, DS 106 if you're doing that, uh, whatever you want it to be. Uh, I, do have, I have a longer explanation of how these work uh, that I'll do tomorrow, but this is where you do it. You create a subdomain, and then if you want to install different software in those respective subdomains, then you do that with the web applications tool, uh, or it's also available down somewhere here something called it's called installatron and uh, when you are ready to install something like wordpress which is what most people do then you go into installatron and then choose it um, and then install it here and again this is this is more like this is getting ahead a little bit this is what i was planning to do tomorrow so if you'd rather not pay attention to this yet then that's fine uh, but once you've got several your subdomains created, then you can install WordPress into each of those subdomains individually. So you would select it here. Um, boy, so many things. Um, so you know you you can select it, and then uh, I recommend deleting the directory because that's going to be added to the end of the URL like like this, and you don't want that. It's, you want to keep it as short as possible, and then. If I do this now, this will do, this would install WordPress into this subdomain called devices.dgst101.net. Um, I'm not doing that, but that's how that goes. Um, okay, so I, I hope that helped a little bit, Jessica. But again, I'll talk more about that tomorrow. Um, so, and bear in mind, like once you set up your domain, that is one choice. Like, but subdomains you can. Do them over and over again like you can do it and then change your mind and delete it and then make another one and then delete it and i mean that's something that you you can play with right and so uh, don't worry about that too much too much i mean making the domain choice initially that's something that you do once but subdomains are forever or, or not forever they're um ephemeral <laughs> like they're the opposite of forever you can just you can spin them up and delete them uh, as, as often as you feel like okay so samantha had a question about the the content so you wrote, can our domain slash website be about our own interest? Um, yes, and it should be ultimately about you more so than this class. However, I am asking you to do some things and share them on your website. So uh, you kind of have to think about the right balance of those. Many people find it useful to, and again, I was going to talk about this a little bit more tomorrow, but many people find it useful to create one installation of WordPress and one website on their main domain. So let's say you choose samantha.com or .net or whatever you want. Um, and then that could be your art website and then make a subdomain for my class. So you'd have dgst1, dgst101.samantha.com. Uh, and then that way you could keep our, those two things completely separate. Um, it, lots of different ways you could do it. You can do them on the same WordPress and just use categories or you know several other variations of that. 
in terms of the actual domain name though, that's why I was recommending choose your domain uh, or choose your actual name or something really simple because that can become all kinds of things uh, with subdomains or with different content that you put there. So if you wanted to, to make it showcase your artwork, uh, that's great, but like your name would do that just as well as uh, samanthasartwebsite.com or something like that. Like you, having your name would be good because then if you decide later, actually I want to do a website about my uh, Minecraft um, Let's Play videos, you know, <laughs> then you can still do that. You wouldn't have to make a new domain called samanthasminecraftvideos.com or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if anyone plays my, my kids are obsessed with Minecraft right now. They're kind of late getting into Minecraft, but they're just like super into it now. So that's what, what came to mind. Anyway, um, I, I hope that makes sense. Okay, so I've kind of I've gone on as I expected. I probably yeah I should have expected. I I did I do tend to go on longer than I than I mean to. Um, let me go back to Canvas here and talk a little bit about this. So ultimately, like what I was saying about choosing a domain name, that's something that uh, I would love to give you some feedback on. If you have any at all any hesitation or if you're concerned about a domain name, please let me let me vet it or let me um, help you decide if it's a good choice. Um, I, I think that sometimes students do make choices they regret, and, and, and unfortunately, there's no way to, to do it again. So, uh, at least not for free. So let me uh, let me know. Uh, reach out on Slack or email or whatever, uh, just to, to run that by me, uh, and I'd be happy to um, to do that. Of course, if you're just totally committed and you're ready to go, then just go ahead. I mean, I'm not going to require you to talk with me, but I just I recommend it. <laughs> uh, so please do that. Uh, today if possible uh, so that tomorrow we can actually work through the WordPress kind of things and you'll have something to work with as I explain it so you'll be actually uh, be able to follow along ideally uh, okay so the other thing I would like for you to do and talk about is a bit more conceptual so this is this idea of digital identity or the idea of like why even have this like what is the point of having a domain so Samantha already mentioned one use for a domain to showcase your artwork I think it's a great use of a domain um, so, uh, but if you don't have an artwork or if you don't have that purpose, uh, you might be wondering what to do with it or why to have a digital identity at all. And I think this is a good starting point. This is an article written by a researcher named Audrey Waters, and she wrote this, actually it's five years old now as an essay, uh, I think a little bit older than that actually, but this particular version is 2015. And she is talking about the early days of our project of UMW Domains. Um, this is something that Maybe you've heard of it before, uh, so maybe you already know about it a little bit, but if not, this is a good way to learn about it. Um, it is, as you see here, an eight minute read, so I think that's a pretty reasonable thing to ask you all to do today. Uh, but take a look at it, and I'd like to have a conversation about this in Slack. Uh, let me know what you think. Um, let me know if you think her ideas still stand. And one of the main things I want you to make sure to think about this from this essay is uh, the name of our, our, the program. So we call it UMW Domains, but the, the longer name of it is a domain of one's own or the domain of one's own. So there is an explanation here in this essay of the origin of that phrase. Um, and I would like for you to reflect on that origin and, and ask yourself and ask each other, ask me, discuss, uh, does that still make sense? Um, is, that, is the radical intention of that reference in that name does is that true does that still hold true uh, does that resonate with you as a user of this system um and you'll see what i mean hopefully as you read the essay but if you're not clear then then uh, certainly we can talk about it uh, and we can try to to wrestle with that and understand it okay so that is a question i would like you to take into slack and discuss so i will pose that question also in canvas and in slack and kind of prompt a discussion there to start that um, tomorrow I will do another live stream, I guess at two, if that works for you, I had 14 viewers. And so that seems like a, that's a pretty good number. Uh, so I think that's a good time. Hopefully it's a good time for you all. Um, I'll do this again at two tomorrow and get, go through a bit of that, um, nuts and bolts kind of stuff with installing WordPress. Um, I should mention, by the way, you can install all kinds of other things. WordPress is what most people use because it's, um, it's relatively user-friendly for a new, you know, a new website administrator. But there's a lot of other stuff out there. Um, I like to use a system called Grab, and it is, I don't really recommend it for beginners, but it's something that I like a lot, and I would be happy to help you understand if you would like to try to work with something a little, a little different than WordPress. Um, but if you are, yeah, if you're just getting started, WordPress is great. So, um, okay, I'm gonna wrap this up because I've gone on for long enough. Um, this video will be archived on YouTube, so I will send that link through Canvas when that's available. I have to 
download it and then upload it and you know that takes a little bit but uh, it'll be uploaded shortly but again uh, discussion question is this essay here this the web we need to give students and um, like what is the value here or what is the what is what is at stake in this name the domain of one's own uh, as opposed to just UMW domains um, yeah pretty much Samantha <laughs> I mean watch the video but you know get oriented to the class and the main thing is is to get your domain um, Okay, so I'm going to wrap this up, and uh, I will just I will respond here. Yes. Also, discuss. So I'm gonna wrap it up um, with the stream. Where's my OBS? There we go. Okay, so if you do have any other questions, I, of course I'll be online for the rest of the day. So feel free to reach out. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. And I'll, I guess I'll see you tomorrow or um, you will see me. All right.